verse 18. Romans chapter 7, verse 18. We welcome those who may be watching live by internet or may watch this archive later. If you're tuning in by internet radio tonight, we welcome you to Bible study. And tonight we're really going to be teaching on the doctrine of sanctification. Just about every single born again believer who's truly saved understands salvation. But yet there's many Christians out there who have been born again and have been wondrously saved, but they don't really understand how to live and walk this Christian life out. And that's really what sanctification deals with, and that's what we're going to get into tonight. Um, I could spend days, weeks, months um, on this topic, amen, but really tonight, with the limited time of only about an hour or so, I'm going to try just to hit the highlights of sanctification and try to keep it simple so you may understand, amen, how to walk this thing out. Amen. The Lord told me a long time ago when I started preaching, just keep it simple. (laughs) I even found a scripture in the Bible, I believe it was in Romans, amen, where it says that those who are um, called for exhortation to uh, exhort with, simplicity. In other words, just keep it simple. Amen. The answer is always the same. Christ and him crucified, the blood of Jesus, just simple faith and grace. And tonight we're going to deal with a doctrine of sanctification and where faith and grace comes into play and how we walk this thing out on our everyday living in Christ. Does everybody have it? Romans chapter 7 verse 18. And the Bible reads, for I know that in me that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. And that's where most Christians are today. The will is present. They want to serve God. They want to live victorious. They don't want sin ruling and reigning in their heart anymore, but they just don't understand how to walk it out. Amen. By faith and grace. So tonight, I hope uh, whoever's uh, here, whoever's listening, whoever needs this, I hope this uh, will bring revelation and illuminate the Word of God to your heart and to your life so that you may understand how to walk in victory. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. And Father, we just thank you for your Son, Lord. Lord, there is no one worthy, no, not one, except your Son, Christ Jesus, because he went to the cross and fulfilled all things, Lord and has forgiven us from our sins because of what he's done. And Father, we just thank you for what you've done and what you've given us, Lord. And Father, I just ask that you open up the scriptures tonight, Lord, and show us through your word, Lord, as the Holy Spirit leads and guides the service tonight on how we have victory over sin. And we'll give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated if you care to. Again, I started out with Romans 7 because this is where most Christians are. They're in it, what we call a Romans 7 life. They understand salvation, but they really just don't understand how to live for the Lord, how to walk this thing out by faith. And what happens to most Christians are they will put up rules, they will put up regulations, they will uh, put up their to-do list and try to use those things to bring about righteousness and to bring about holiness and try to bring about victory in one's life over sin. And they find themselves always coming short and always um, succumbing to the power of sin rather than to the power of God. And so tonight, again, we're going to try to break this down and just go over the highlights of how one is to have victory over sin and how one is to perform that which is good. Amen. Because again, many, the will is present, but they just don't know how to perform that which is good. Amen. So first of all, the word sanctification. In the Greek, the word really is H-A-G-I-A-Z-O. Hagiazo. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but that's the best I'm doing tonight. And really that word in the Greek means to make holy. So when you see the word sanctification, it's really talking about trying to make one holy or holiness. It can also uh, mean to be said to mean the setting apart of something to something. 
In other words, those who upon faith in Christ and what he's done at the cross are set apart from the world and onto Christ exclusively. That's what it means for sanctification. It means to make holy. Amen. Setting apart something onto something else. In other words, we've been set apart from the world and onto Christ and him crucified and that alone exclusively. Amen. Amen. Sanctification really refers to making one clean while justification declares one clean. Let me say that again. Sanctification means to make one holy and to set us apart onto something else. We've been set apart from the world and been set apart to Christ exclusively. Amen. Amen. And not only that, it also means to make one clean. While justification declares one clean. Amen. Do you understand that? The fact is, one cannot be declared clean until one is made clean. So you really can't be justified until you're sanctified first. Amen? Amen. Let me say that again. You really can't be justified, declared clean, until you're first made clean. Amen? So what you may be asking, well, Brother Brad, what happened at salvation? Turn with me to 1 Corinthians Chapter 6, and we're going to read verses 9 through 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. Does everybody have it? It says, Do you not know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, or, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor exhorters shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you are washed, Amen. but you are sanctified, yes. but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. In other words, when you got saved, when you cried out to God and you said, Lord, there's nothing I can do, please save me, amen, the Holy Spirit instantaneously came into you and made you born again. Well, how did he make you born again? Well, first of all, we see from this scripture, he washed you in the blood of Jesus, amen. Amen. He had washed us, amen, by the blood of Jesus Christ from all sin. We see that in Revelation chapter 1 verse 5. You don't have to turn there because I want you to stay here at 1 Corinthians. But I'll read that scripture very quickly. It says, And from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. First of all, when you cried out to the Lord and gave your heart and life to him and said, Lord, save me, the Holy Spirit came in and he made you born again and he dwells in you. And he does that, amen, by first of all, washing us in the blood of Jesus Christ. And then once he had washed us in the blood of Jesus Christ, amen, we were sanctified due to the blood cleansing us. We are given a position of perfection because we're now in Christ. Amen? The blood washed us from all of our sins. What Christ did at the cross washed us from all of our sins. And because of that, we are now sanctified. Amen? In in other words, our position is now in Christ Jesus and we are made clean due to the Lamb and His blood. We are sanctified holy. Amen? Amen? Our position with the Lord is we are now sanctified positionally 
because we're now in him due to being washed in the blood. And once because we are now sanctified, we next see the next verse says, but you are justified. First you was washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, amen. You was sanctified, forgiven all of your sins, amen. And your position, amen, was a position of perfection. And because of that, you are now declared righteous, amen. You are now declared saved. You are now declared born again. You are now declared a child of God because you've been washed, you've been sanctified, and now by faith you are justified, declared clean. Do you understand that tonight? We see from this scripture, when you got saved, he washed you, he made you clean, and then he declared you clean. Amen? And our position will never change, irrespective of our conduct. No matter what you do, your position will never change as long as you constantly evidence faith in Christ and what he's done at the cross. No matter how many mistakes you have made, amen, that your sins are forgiven past, present, and future because your position has been washed, sanctified, and you've been justified. So no matter what you do, no matter what lie the devil tells you, amen, don't listen to him because you've been washed, you've been sanctified, you've been uh, justified by the blood of Jesus Christ, and as long as you keep believing... No matter how many mistakes you make, no, as long as you keep believing... Your position is still perfect. Amen. We see this in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 14. It says in Hebrews 10 14. For by one offering he has perfected forever them. Who are sanctified. Amen. Amen. So no matter irrespective of what conduct you do. No matter how big of a mess up. That we make. Our position in Christ. Never ever changes. As long as we evidence faith. In him and that precious blood. Amen. Amen. Because by grace through faith. You've been washed. You've been cleansed. And you've been justified. Amen. I like what one brother uh, said that I heard when I was listening to his preaching. Making mistakes didn't get you saved. So guess what? Making mistakes don't get you unsaved either. Amen. Let me say that again. Making mistakes didn't get you saved. It was faith and grace that got you saved. So guess what? Mistakes don't make you unsaved. Because your position will never change as long as you continue believing. Amen. Irrespective of what we do. Because as we see, amen, all by grace and faith. First of all, he washed us with the blood. And because he washed us with the blood, he sanctified us. He made us clean. Amen. Our sins are forgiven past, present, and future. Amen. And because we are made clean, we are justified, declared clean. Amen. Amen. Again, we are washed, we are sanctified, and we are justified. As sanctification made us clean, giving us a perfect position in Christ, justification declares us clean, declaring the work as a legal entity. In other words, by grace through faith, He washed you in the blood. He sanctified you, made you clean. And because you're made clean, you are justified, declared clean. And guess what? Your justification is not just a not guilty. Your justification is innocent. (laughs) See, there's a difference, amen, when it comes to, if you go into any court of law, one who's not guilty is just because they didn't have enough evidence to convict them of a crime. While being declared innocent means there's no evidence at all. Amen. So not only are you just, you're not just not guilty when it comes to justification. You are innocent 
because you've been washed, you've been sanctified, you've been made clean, and you are by faith justified, declared clean. You're not just declared not guilty. You are declared innocent. Amen. No evidence at all because you've been washed, you've been sanctified, and by faith you have been justified. Your position will never change. Not just the guilty, but innocent. Amen. Again, in the court of law, a not guilty means that there's just not enough evidence to convict while there is some evidence. Amen. While innocent means there's no evidence at all. You're innocent. Amen. And that's the way the Lord looks at us due to grace and faith being hid in Christ. Because we've been washed, we've been sanctified, and we are justified. We're innocent. Amen. Because we're hid in the one who is perfect. Amen. And the last thing here, it says we've been washed, it says we've been sanctified, it says we've been justified. And the fourth thing is in our salvation, which we have not received yet, is our glorification. We have not been glorified yet. And that will happen at the rapture. Amen. Our future glorification. This last step will come in the future at the rapture. Amen. We have been washed. We have been sanctified. We have been justified. Amen. And when the rapture happens, we will be glorified. All by grace through faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's good news, church. No matter what you do, your position never changes in Christ. Amen. Because you've been sanctified. Amen. You've been made clean through the blood. Amen. And because of that, you are justified by your faith as well. You are declared clean. You are declared innocent of anything and everything. Yes, amen. amen. Now to the heart of the matter of about sanctification. So, Brother Brad, does this mean I can just ignore sin and don't have to confess or repent of sin in my life at all? Good question. Amen. But we have to understand, we are still in this corrupt body yet. We have not received our glorification yet. Amen. And until we, we, until we receive our, or until we not receive our glorification, we're still in this corrupt body. There's still lusts of the flesh. And guess what? Even though the power of sin and the sin nature was broken at Calvary's cross, it still dwells in us. Amen. And if we misplace our faith, that thing can uh, revive once again and start ruling and reigning in our heart and life, amen. And the power of sin can start dominating us again if we misplace our faith in something else. And guess what will happen? It will make a miserable Christian walk. Amen. So no, just because our position is uh, by faith, we are washed, sanctified, and justified, and our position is perfect in Christ, and irrespective of what we do, that position can never change. That doesn't give us a license to stay in sin or a license to sin. Yes, amen. amen. Because until our glorification, we're still in this corrupt body. Amen. There's still a sin nature. While it's not supposed to rule and reign in our life, it still dwells in us and can make us do the things we don't want to do if we don't understand how to walk this thing out and how the sanctification process works. Amen. Amen. Because you have to understand, at salvation, our position is here with Christ, seated in heavenly places. Amen. And when he looks at you, he sees you as perfect because you're hidden the one who was perfect. Amen. Because you've been washed, sanctified, and justified. But until our glorification, while our position is in Christ here, seated in heavenly places, our condition yes. is still woefully short. Amen. And so while our position is here with Christ, our condition is down here woefully short. Amen. Amen. And it's a lifelong process. And that's the whole idea of the sanctification process. Amen. Is to bring our condition and try to make us Christ-like, make us holy, make us clean, and try to bring our condition up to where our position is in Christ. Do you understand that? And it takes a lifelong process. Amen. Actually, a lifelong process probably isn't long enough for us. <laughs> that's right. Amen. But the Holy Spirit, the whole reason why the Lord sent him back to dwell in us, 
amen, was not just to make us feel good, was not just to give us goosebumps, amen, when the presence of the Lord starts moving, but the whole reason why he gave us the Holy Spirit to dwell in us is so he could start the ongoing progressive sanctification work, amen, to make our condition holy, to make our condition clean, and try to bring it up to where our position is in Christ Jesus. See, while our position, we are seated in heavenly places with the Lord, and according to our position, we have been washed, we have been sanctified, and we have been justified all by grace and faith, you have to understand our condition is still woefully short. And if we don't understand how this progressive sanctification process works for our condition, what's going to happen is our condition is never going to be made... uh, Our condition is never going to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord. I'll put it that way. And what's going to happen is you're going to stay in a Roman 7 life. And you're going to never see growth. You're never going to see progress. You're going to never going to see spiritual maturity. And what's going to happen is your condition is going to stay way down here. And it's going to be a miserable Christian life. Amen. Amen. And that gets to the question of what we opened up this Bible study with. For the will is present, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. And many people don't understand the sanctification process when it comes to our condition, which is woefully short. And because of that, they're living a miserable Christian life. Amen. Their will is present. Their motives are wanting to be changed, but they just don't know how to be changed. Amen. And in the age that we live in, most people try to use rules. They try to use regiments. They try to use self-help books. They try to use psychology. They try to use everything under the sun except the power of God through grace and faith. Amen. Amen. So no, this does not mean that we can ignore sin and not have to confess or repent of any sin in our life. Amen. Because... We all know, with our condition, we're falling short every day. Amen. The Bible does not teach entire sanctification, which implies one has attained to sinless perfection. So in other words, the Bible does not teach that the minute you get saved, you become sinless. Because the sanctification process is a progressive work. It's an ongoing, lifelong work. Amen. At the minute of conversion or salvation, you get saved, you get washed, sanctified, and justified positionally. And you're seated in heavenly places with Christ. But our condition, because we have not been glorified yet, we're still in this corrupt body. We still have lusts of the flesh. And we still have a sin nature that dwells in us that can revive at any moment if we start misplacing our faith. Which can make for a miserable Christian walk. Amen. And we see not even Paul was sinless. Go to Philippians chapter 3. Verses 12 to 14. Philippians chapter 3, verses 12, and we're going to read through through to verses 14. Everybody have it? It says, Not as though I have already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after. If that I may apprehend, that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So we see here, Paul even had the attitude of that he didn't, just because he got the meaning of the new covenant, he never thought of himself as being sinless, as being uh, perfect, as his condition being where his position is. 
He always knew there was more work that the Holy Spirit had to do on him. Amen. And he always pressed forward, looking to that high calling, which is in Christ Jesus, always yielding and allowing the Holy Spirit to make the changes for him and making him more Christ-like as he followed Christ. If the Apostle Paul didn't consider himself to be entirely sanctified, I don't think we should either. While our position is perfect, our condition is not. And Paul, the Apostle Paul even knew this. He even admitted that his condition was not perfect. And he was probably one of the most Christ-like men that has ever walked the face of the earth. And if Apostle Paul didn't think of himself as sinless or as his condition being perfect, then there's no reason why we should think that either. And the reason I'm saying this is because there's a lot of false doctrine out there, especially the hyper grace or the word of faith who just tells you to ignore sin and that your position is perfect and that you don't have to think about sin and don't have to deal with sin or anything at all in that sense. And while part of that is true, our position is perfect, they uh, ignore their condition and don't allow the Holy Spirit to do what he wants to do in them, which is bring their condition up to where their position is. Amen? Again, let me recap this because I want to keep repeating this because many believers don't understand this. While our sanctification as a position has been made perfect, our condition is still coming woefully short every day. So we know there is a progressive sanctification as it regards our daily life and living. Amen? We see this also in 1 Thessalonians Chapter 5, verses 23 to 24. And the Bible reads in 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 23 to 24. It says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he who calls you who also will do it. So we see from this that there is a progressive, ongoing sanctification process or a progressive, ongoing where the Holy Spirit is trying to make our condition clean, make our condition holy. Amen. Sanctify our condition to try to bring it up to where our position is in Christ Jesus. So how does grace sanctify our condition? First of all, most of the church world has got it all wrong. Most churches today have been making up rules, regiments, or this or that, all the way from the beginning of the church, trying to think that that will earn them or merit them some kind of holiness. Amen. When it pertains to our sanctification, but to no avail. Amen. Because in Galatians chapter 2, verse 21... It says, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. If what you do sanctifies you, if what you do makes you holy, if what you do makes you clean, if that's the way righteousness comes, amen, because you got to see your imputed righteousness because you're justified, amen, but before you can be justified, you have to be sanctified. But many think because of what they do sanctifies them, and because of that, that earns them righteousness, and that's not right. That's incorrect. The Bible does not teach that. Because if righteousness come by what you do or come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Because then there was no point of Christ coming at all and dying on the cross. Amen. Amen. I know for most men, they think because I wear a suit and a tie, this makes me holy, this makes me righteous. If that was the case, then Christ died in vain. If the women think, well, I just won't wear no makeup and that'll make me holy and that'll sanctify me, well, then Christ died in vain. 
Does that make sense? It's not what you do that makes you holy. It's not what you do that makes you righteous. It's whom you and you, who you have believed that makes you holy and righteous because that's the only way the Holy Spirit works. Because he will not glorify you or me. He will only glorify Jesus. He will not give us any of the glory. He wants to give us the victory, but he will never give us the glory. Amen. Amen. So what churches have been doing all the way from the beginning, which pertains to sanctification, is they think because of what I do, how much I read, how much I pray, how much makeup I put on or don't put on, how fancy of a suit I put on makes me holy and sanctifies me, that is incorrect. That is false. Amen. Now, that may be a byproduct of what you may see coming out of you as the Holy Spirit changes you, but that in itself does not sanctify you. Amen. Does that make sense? I'll say that again. As God does the changing, you may see some of these things come out as in dressing properly or wearing the proper makeup or et cetera, et cetera. It may be a byproduct due to the sanctification process, but these things in themselves do not sanctify you. Because it is the Holy Spirit alone who can bring about this process. And that is the hardest thing for most Christians is to get out of the way and let God do the changing. Amen. I'll say that again. That's the hardest thing for us human beings, preachers included. Amen. Is to get out of the way and let the Holy Ghost do the changing. The same way you got saved is the same way he changes you on a daily basis. Amen. That's how he changes your condition. Amen. That's the reason God gave us the Holy Spirit to dwell in us. That's his number one priority is to sanctify our condition. To make our condition clean. To make our condition holy. Try to bring our condition up to where our position is. That's why he dwells in us. That's why God gave us the Holy Ghost. Amen. To sanctify us. That is his number one job in the believer. His number one job to the sinner is getting them saved. The number one job in the believer is to bring our condition up. Amen. To sanctify us. And if we don't understand how the Holy Spirit works, well, then we're never going to see the sanctification process in our life. And if there is any sanctification process, it'll be very little. Because we have to understand, first of all, it's the Holy Ghost who does the sanctifying. Amen. We can't sanctify ourselves. I'm sorry. No matter what we do. It's not going to earn us anything. It's not going to merit us any brownie points with God. We have to give it to God. Amen. And we have to let the Holy Spirit do his job. Amen. And if we yield to him, if we will just yield to the Holy Ghost and allow him to change us by his grace, we are going to see that sanctification process starting in our lives. Amen. And when it does, it's going to teach us. Amen. We see that in Titus. Chapter 2. This is a very well-known verse that I always recite, but it's an important one tonight. Titus chapter 2, verse 11. It says, For the grace of God... That brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. If we'll just get out of the way and just apply simple faith in the blood of Jesus Christ every single day, the Holy Ghost will start sanctifying our condition and start bringing it up and making the changes in us. And as he does that, that grace is going to teach us what's worldly and what's unworldly, what's righteous, what's unrighteous, what's godly, what's ungodly. Amen. What's drunkardness and what's sober in this present world. So how do we yield to the Holy Ghost to allow him to sanctify us? 
Jesus said it best in Luke 9, 23, a very well-known verse. Deny self, take up the cross, and follow him. Deny self. Realize in your own strengths, abilities, talents, rules, regiments, you can't do it. But Jesus has already conquered it. Amen. Take up your cross and just follow him. Amen. And when you do that on a daily basis, you will see the power of sin diminish in your life. You will see less of self coming out. And you will see more Christ-likeness coming out. And you will see more fruit of the Spirit and victory in your life every day. Amen. You see, grace does not give us a license to sin or a reason to stay in our sin. Grace gives us the power of God so that we may have victory over sin. Amen. Let me give you an example. Alcohol used to be a bondage for me, but when I gave my heart and life to Christ, that was broke. I didn't need that anymore. And I was free from it because all I did was I believed, amen, that he has given me victory over this through the blood and just followed him. Amen. Same way with cigarettes. I smoked from 16 to my mid-20s. I was a chain smoker. I got to the point where I would have one cigarette in my mouth and I'd pull another cigarette out to try to put it in my mouth to light it, realizing I had one in my mouth. Now, it didn't fall off like it did alcohol within a blink of an eye. But by His grace, I was able to just lay those things aside, throw them away. And just fight the good fight of faith and believe every single day. He has given me victory over this through the blood. Do you believe it? Amen. See, you don't miss the best example I can give. Amen. Some would say, well, Brother Brad, I have a problem with nicotine or I have a problem with alcohol or I have a problem with anger or this or that. What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to have victory over this thing? Well, first of all, I'll just use cigarettes because that's something God freed me from. When I realized that Christ paid the price for me to have victory over this, I didn't just put the pack on the refrigerator and say, well, I'm going to continue smoking until God gives me some kind of great manifestation. Until then, no, that's not the right thinking either. Amen. What I did was, by grace, <laughs> took the pack, threw them in the trash can, and said, I don't need these anymore. He has delivered me from this because the blood has set me free. Do you believe it? See, now here's the fight you're supposed to fight. Do you believe it? That's the fight we're supposed to fight. Amen. Nowhere in the Bible does it, does it tell us to fight against sin. Because if you're fighting against sin, you're going to fight on losing ground. And you'll lose every single time. Because guess what? If I fought against those cigarettes, I just put them on the refrigerator and say, I don't need them for today. And then with all my willpower, I would try to resist those things and try to... Stop it, saying, I don't need it. Yes, I do. No, I don't. Michelle would yell at me. Yes, I need them. No, I don't. And then it would come to the point where I'd say, I need one. And I'd pull it out. And then it was a miserable life. You don't fight against it. I just, by grace, picked them up, threw them away, and said, the blood has delivered me. I don't need this. Now, do you believe it? See, now, now you're starting to fight the good fight. Do you believe it? See, right now, those who may be battling with alcohol, nicotine, drugs, whatever the case may be, who have just heard the sound of my voice saying, you are delivered. Do you believe it? See, now, everything within you is trying to fight against that, saying, no, I don't believe that. And the devil was right there in your ear saying, oh, you're not delivered yet. Amen. But fight the good fight of faith. Do you believe that the blood of Jesus Christ has delivered you? 
Amen. And then once he takes up, once you get victory over that thing, guess what? The Holy Spirit brings up the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing. And then it's a lifelong process, and the next thing, and the next thing. Amen. That's the sanctification process. That's, what the Holy, that's why the Holy Spirit dwells in us. Amen. Let me give you another example of sanctification. When you try to purify gold, you put it in fire, and guess what? All the impurities rise to the surface. Amen. And as the impurities rise to the surface, that person dips them out. And as he dips out each piece of impurity, it makes that gold more pure. That's the same thing with the sanctification process. That's why we go through trials. That's why we go through tribulations. Amen. As we go through those fires, guess what? The impurities rise to the surface. Anger rises to the surface. Envy rises to the surface. Covetousness rises to the surface. Amen. Our crutches, our alcohol, our cigarettes, our drugs all rise to the surface as we try to crutch on them. But the Lord's saying, by grace, give them to me. Lay them aside. Lay aside every sin that so easily besets you. Lay it aside by my grace and give it to me. And just believe that the blood has freed you. Now that's the sanctification process. That's how the Holy Spirit works. And all we have to do is just believe. That's it. Just believe. Amen. When it comes to victory over sin, when it comes to victory over a bondage, just believe that the blood of Jesus Christ has freed me. And walk in that every single day. Amen. And again, if we allow him to change us, we will see less of self and less of sin and we'll see more of Christ and more fruit of the Spirit in our everyday Christian walk. Well, Brother Brad, what happens if I fail? Get back up. Say, Lord, forgive me, but I'm still believing. That's all you got to do. Amen. 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 It's a fight. Don't get me wrong. It, it's not going to be a bed of roses. Amen. Paul called it a fight for a reason. But it's a good fight. Amen. The Bible says it's a good fight because it's a fight we can win. Because God is fighting on our behalf as we just believe in him. Amen. Amen. But many do not understand this. Many are trying to use their own works, their own talents, their own abilities, their own strength, their own willpower, their own motives, their own rules, their own regiments. They're trying to use these things to bring about holiness and righteousness and try to bring about some kind of sanctification, but to no avail. And they find themselves praying the same thing Paul prayed in Romans 7. For the will is present, but how to perform that which is good, Lord, I find not. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Amen. And the Lord gave him the meaning of the new covenant. And when he understood that it's just fighting the good fight of faith and just believing every single day, the same way he got saved is the same way he keeps you. It's the same way he frees you. It's the same way he heals you. It's the same way he delivers you. It's the same way he sanctifies you. It's the same way he does everything by grace through faith. And if we allow that grace to change us, amen, by just evidencing faith in the blood of Jesus Christ and by grace laying those sins aside and just believing we're free because of what he has done, we will find ourselves not in a Romans 7 state saying how to perform that which is good I find not, but actually we'll find ourselves in Romans 8 too. Amen. Saying for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has, I said, has made me free. I said, has made me free. 
I said, has made me free. I said, has for the law of the spirit of life, for the law of the Holy Ghost in Christ Jesus has, I said, you got to get that tonight, church, has made me free from the law of sin and death. Due to the blood, I have been made free. I don't need alcohol anymore. I've been made free. I don't need cigarettes anymore. I've been made free. I don't need drugs anymore pumped in my vein. I've been made free. From the law of sin and death. And all the Lord asks of us. If you get anything out of this tonight. On sanctification. When it comes to our condition. Trying to bring up our position. Where it is. Realize two things. Number one. You can't change yourself. So you might as well get it out of your head. Thinking you can do it. Because no you can't. Can a leopard change its spots? No. Can an Ethiopian change the color of his skin? No. You can't change yourself. No matter what self-help improvements you try to do, no matter what rules or regiments you try to set up, you cannot change yourself. You need the power of God, the grace of God to change you. And the only way that power works and the only way the Holy Ghost will make any changes on your behalf is if you believe that Christ has already paid for in his own blood. Amen. Amen. And if you'll believe that every day, you'll see that sin diminish. You'll see that bondage diminish. No matter what the bondage is, whether it's physical, whether it's emotional, whether it's spiritual, whatever the bondage is, you'll see it go away. Sometimes they just instantly are gone. Other times, you're just going to have to fight the good fight of faith every day, but it will diminish. Amen. And you'll see the fruit of the Spirit coming out on an everyday basis, and you'll see more Christ-like coming about. And when you mess up, and the devil's in your ear saying, you see, you messed up again. You just look the devil straight in the eye and say, guess what? My mistakes didn't get me saved, so they're not getting me unsaved. I'm going on with Jesus just the same. Amen. 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 Would you stand? The sanctification process. The minute you got saved, the Lord washed you, He sanctified you, made your position perfect, and then declared you clean. But the problem is, our condition is still woefully short, and we need the Holy Spirit on our behalf to try to bring up our condition where our position is. And it's a lifelong process. And if we'll just apply faith in the blood of Jesus every single day, the same way we got saved, is the same way he makes our condition holy, makes our condition clean, makes our condition sanctified. If we'll just apply that simple faith in the blood of Jesus and fight the good fight of faith, you'll see the power of God start to change you. You'll see those bondages go away, and you'll see more Christ-like and the fruit of the Spirit starting to come out on an everyday life and instead of being in a Romans 7 you'll find yourself in Romans 8 saying for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free I said has made me free from the law of sin and death Heavenly Father Lord we love you and Father I've done my best Lord to teach your word on the sanctification process and Lord I just ask Lord, that you take it to the people's hearts, Lord, and illuminate this word and uh, give them a revelation about the message of the cross, Lord, and how the blood not only saves us, but it also sanctifies our condition. And Lord, we'll give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.